Hi guys, this is Nate, Reach 3D Printers. Today we are printing with PETG. Um, PETG is an interesting material. It's a bit more flexible. Um, it's more flexible than PLA. I can just kind of pull some of this off the spool and show you guys. Um, it definitely, it's almost like a rubbery, but I mean, it's hard. It has a glass like look to it really glossy um, you have to print it at higher temperatures than PLA a little bit at least um, because it's more viscous when it's molten um, so higher temperatures allow it to extrude easier you also need to prevent warping using a heated bed um, it definitely seems to help uh, one of the biggest challenges with this material is getting it to stick so, um, one thing that I have found is that, oh, let me get this spool back on. Yeah. Um, one thing I've noticed is that like printing on glass, you get much better adhesion. I think we discussed that in the forum about um, certain materials doing better. This is not going on this spool so easily. Avoid uh, getting things, getting the spool to, <laughs> okay, back on the spool. Um, <clears throat> so one thing uh, was a glass bed is really helpful to get things to stick and, and I try to go old school with the blue tape as often as possible. Um, certain things that just don't like to stick, you have to rough them up with sandpaper and then alcohol all the particles off and that way you get a little more grit to grab onto. Um, PETG is, um, some people like it better because it's a little more giving than uh, PLA. PLA is more rigid and has a tendency to crack um, when, it, when pressure is applied across the grain of the print. Um, ABS is um, petroleum based and it will like bend, sort of like turn white, kind of like a Lego. You try to take some needle nose pliers and pry off the edge of a Lego, it'll kind of give, it won't just fracture. So ABS generally is considered a more robust outdoor material, waterproof. Um, I believe PETG is also waterproof. Um, and it's supposed to be closer to PLA, but there are definitely some challenges. I'm already catching some no, no, that may be just the shape of the boat. Yeah. Um, I printed a brim on here, but it wasn't much of one. And I didn't, my height was maybe just a little bit too high. But hopefully it'll stick. The first layer on more difficult materials really has to be smushed down onto the, the surface. Um, unless you're using something like hairspray and glass, or if you're using... Um, like build tack build tack is like a eh, it's kind of like a really really fine sandpaper like material it's kind of expensive but um, it holds up for quite a while so here are some of the specs I'm printing at um, 65 degrees Celsius um, 238 that's maybe a touch hot for PETG but the hotter the better I'm only running at 30 percent at least to start off with I'll increase the speed as we go just wanted to make sure I had the first couple layers had really good adhesion. Um, I guess I could show you the the spool. So this is the PETG. It's um, I mean it, it, it. You can see it's kind of got a slickness to it, but it's also slightly rubbery. I got this stuff from uh, Maker Geeks. Uh, it says printing at 225, but I really, I really feel like higher temps really help out quite a bit more with some of this uh, more challenging material. Put this back in there. Okay. So, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and do a time lapse. I think at this point, um, I'll try to get the screen included. This is just Benchy. Um, I like Benchy. He's super cool. Um, really challenges the printer in a lot of ways. Um, but hopefully, you'll be able to see the time. I'm at 11 minutes and I'll increase the feed rate and you guys can also see what layer height I am. I think I'm printing at 
0.25 layer heights, so a little thicker. I wanted to really try to get this thing to stick. Um, at this point, I think I'm going to it's all only a 10% infill with two uh, shell thickness so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, increase the speed because I feel pretty comfortable with it being at a pretty solid couple layers um, I like to increase it a little on the slower side so that the filament doesn't like burst out um, I think this is a 54 minute print but I'm not gonna run it at full speed I'm going to take it down to 80. It feels comfortable. Um, hopefully this stays stuck. It's it's looking like it's going to be okay. But we shall see. I was thinking about maybe raising the temperature based on how this kind of speed is handled. Um, I may raise the temperature a tiny bit more, like 240, 242 perhaps. So you can change stuff on the fly if you feel like you need a little more, um, so like nozzle, change the speed, 242, that looks good. Uh, and you know, you could like, maybe the bed, you feel like it could stick a, maybe a little better. I'll turn it up to 70. There it is, 242. Dang, it already went up there. Um, 70 on the bed. That'll take a minute to raise. It's only 16 degrees Celsius out right now. Mm. So it's a bit on the chilly side. And you know, <clears throat> when you're printing something that takes high temperatures, the colder the ambient temperature is, the more challenging the print as well. So this is a pretty good challenge. I would, I would recommend printing at room temperature, you know, 70 Fahrenheit or what is that, 23, 25 degrees Celsius. So, it's uh, maybe, I don't know, my centigrade Fahrenheit isn't quite, <laughs> not super knowledgeable with, with uh, some of those conversions. Um, yeah, 1.8 plus 32. Anyways, uh, I, I, I think we'll get okay results. Um, as long as that corner doesn't pop off, it looks like this corner is, or this front nose of the boat's gonna hold pretty well. Um, I'm gonna move the camera a little bit over here. Maybe you guys can see the corner that I'm talking about. So this is the biggest trick with printing ABS and, and uh, PETG. See how that's trying to lift there? Like this side looks great. But this side's gonna lift. It's already starting to. Yeah. Well, we'll see how it does. It could cause a, uh, a compression in the back of the boat, but we might be okay. Um, oh, get the screen in there. That way you guys can see the progress, speeds, all that. All right. Well, I uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start the time lapse and. Uh, See you guys in a minute. Hi guys, we're back. Um, we're just finishing up the very last bit of the time lapse. We're an hour and eight minutes in. Let's get this to focus. There we go. Well, as you can see, I'm going to show you the bottom of this print. Um, if you're noticing right down there, it's lifting off the back surface. And uh, I got lucky um, because two thirds of it stuck up front. So so that was pretty fortunate. I um, wanted to go in a little bit about PETG. I was just doing some research and um, PED, PETG is kind of like acrylic but um, a, a lot more forgiving as far as um, the strength of it, like shatter resistance, 
Um, <clears throat> it's a it's a pretty good material. Um, it's considered food safe, but um, if you're 3D printing cups and whatnot, there's a good chance that um, bacteria can live in the crevices of the print. So it's not really recommended to be used to print cups and stuff that's reusable. Um, well, there's another element um, I wanted to cover regarding the temperature of what you're printing. As you can see, I, I got the bed heat up pretty good. 70 uh, centigrade, 242 is the nozzle temp. The temperature in the garage is 15 degrees. So that's like, it's like uh, 60, 58 degrees Fahrenheit for uh, us base 12 people. <laughs> um, so it's, it's pretty chilly in here, but I did read that um, a PETG actually does pretty good with a colder ambient temperature as long as you can get it to stick. Um, so that seems to be the, uh, a little issue that we almost had. Um, I'll get a close up of the details here in a minute when it finishes. But um, I wanted to go ahead and cover a few other things. Um, Benji, I was just checking out this edge and it's a problem I keep noticing and it's probably something to do with my slicer, how it bulges right at the, the roof. This was also printed at 0.25 millimeter layer heights, so a little thicker. The thicker the layers, the better the, the rises will be, like the angles. Um, also, if you noticed, the archways came out super nice. Um, they came out really, really good. I did print this a little bit on the slower side. This little piece down here, that little wobble, is actually a piece of the brim. That comes off. Um, it's supposed to be removable. Um, it just didn't do its job and stick very well. Well, let's jump over here real quick. I wanted to show you guys a, a little bit of, of uh, details regarding printing on glass. This is borosilicate, B-O-R-O-S-I-L-E. L-I-C-A-T-E, borosilicate glass. Um, you have to clean it with alcohol just to get any oils off. This is thermal glass for like stoves, wood burning stoves or um, uh, pellet stoves, any kind of high temp stuff or your oven even. Um, a great thing to use is like Aquanet to get stuff to stick really well. Some people prefer uh, purple Elmer's glue. Um, the purple stuff is the way to go um, from what I've heard. And then some people prefer to use Kapton tape. Um, this stuff's a little bit on the expensive side. Oh, just finished. This stuff's a little bit on the expensive side, but um, some people really like it. All right, we are done. So let's take a look at this guy. Um, some stuff you have to like um, pry off, but this stuff should release easy. Um, so it took a minute and 12, or a minute, an hour and 12 minutes. Um, I think I was running this at about 40... 40 millimeters a second in general. Um, yeah, that came off really easy. Um, it came off so easy because it's it was almost pulled up on its own. Um, okay, so we'll start with the bottom. Uh, so, eh, this is that brim. If you print a brim, it basically does a little layer around the edge. Yeah. It does a little layer on the edge and you just peel that off. If I had two hands, that would be a lot easier. Um, I do have two hands. I just forgot to use the other set. Alright, so <laughs> let's just take a look at this um, up close. So I'm not shaking around everywhere. Alright, let's get this brim off here because Um, well that brim should just peel right off. I think I'm just making it worse. <laughs> Alright, we'll just take a look at the part. Um, so I get a little more light. Get a higher vantage point. Okay, so here is the print. Not too bad. It really got these overhangs really nicely. But again, I printed in a thicker layer and I slowed it down a little bit. 
those holes came out really well as as well well as well you can see a little bit of a uh, what's called a uh, ringing where it's like chum 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 um, or artifacts they have a bunch of different names um, looks like there's a little but these these came out really nicely not too bad um, these reflections are just gonna show everything like every little detail is gonna show up with these reflections wish my camera would stop refocusing I noticed there was a string in here um, I was doing some research and I'd read that stringing is a problem with PETG I, think I got that little piece off there but honestly man this camera's focusing issue. It's, I think it's the app. Crazy focus, refocus, refocus, refocus. Holy crap, guys. I am sorry. This app is sucks. <laughs> I want to show you up close if the stupid thing would quit being a refocusing fanatic. Um, there's also Benchy on the back here. Um, it's so small, it just didn't really produce much as far as that name is concerned. Um, overall, not too bad. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, so, BETG is supposed to be a um, a little better version of PLA. It's uh, supposed to be water resistant and all that. Um, but honestly, it's a lot more difficult to print in my opinion than PLA so I would almost put it into a a no-go category uh, it's more expensive and it just doesn't provide a whole lot of benefit in a lot of ways um, I mean it's a nice print though um, I, I think if if you needed the material for a specific purpose then PETG definitely offers some some uh, valuable things but um, ABS does extraordinarily well you know so um, and it's generally cheaper. Actually, I don't think this PETG from Maker Geeks, I don't think it was any more expensive than PLA or ABS. It's all about the same these days. Um, anyways, uh, that's basically the video. Um, next, I'm going to do a short video about different um, materials. Like, how can you tell if you've got ABS or if you've got PLA? what are nylon you know what are the differences so we will cover that in a few minutes all right thanks guys